Alrighty, tubers. Just driving down the road and found some free lawnmowers on the side of the road. This one's nice and clean. Uh, I think it has four Toro mowers, two with bags. I grabbed the ones with the bags, and just as I got here to grab them, had another Gen 1 show up to grab the others. That's uh, not too bad. This is a recycler. 22. It looks like they've been sitting a long time. There's a lot of dust on them. But this one is rear-wheel drive, personal pace. This is all-wheel drive, personal pace. It's a pretty nice high-dollar mower right there. Let's get them, uh, let's get them back and start working on them. Alrighty, tubers. We're going to go ahead and start with this guy. This is the Toro Recycler 22-inch deck. It's got the Toro engine. I believe it's an actual Toro engine. I mean, they're they're Chinese made now. They're like everything is Chinese made. Ah, I shouldn't say everything. A lot of things are Chinese made. Which really, these Chinese made engines are relatively fine. Um, I'm just checking. Yeah, it almost looked like the blade was bent, but that doesn't look like it. It's gonna knock <laughs> if I don't take that off. There's a piece of grass right here. Piece of grass that uh, was hitting the blade. Whoop. The grass is gone. Anyways, I feel like somebody scrubbed it or something. This guy also, I have noticed, doesn't have an air filter at all. This whole side is soaked in oil and dust and grime. Hoping the engine's okay on this. Uh, the pull string doesn't work for some odd reason. You pull on the pull string and it doesn't retract. Like the little bit you pull on it, it'll retract. But that's it. That's all you get. And then, so first thing we're going to do is look at this pull string. We'll pull it off. He's a Phillips head screwdriver. And for everybody who's wondering, yes, I hurt my wrist. It's been hard uh, making any videos, but I'm finally back to it. I'm back to work and I'm back to making videos again. Which I'm happy about. It's a really weird looking fuel cap. Pull it off. Well, I guess I don't have to necessarily pull it off. I can just pick this up, turn it to the side. All right, let's go ahead and take this cap off here. Bit of stuff there. Oh, there's a fan driven choke on this. I'm gonna have to disable that or take it off. I'm just trying to get into this. Let's see. I just take it off right at that screw right here. Is it a 10? No, oh, it's gonna be an 8. Down. It doesn't go anywhere. All right, we got the pull string off now. Let's see what we can do about fixing this. It almost seems like the the spring either isn't tight enough to wind it back or it's too tight, lack of lubrication. You just have to be careful lubricating these because if you lubricate them where they're not supposed to be, they stop working. All right, Let's see what we can do about getting that to work. Well, let's try winding this out all the way first. You can see it moves freely. 
it's that part right there that's see I, as, as soon as I loosen it it's moving now so let's go ahead and disassemble it a little bit here I just don't want any springs flying out at me I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant right there see if I can find some all right so we're gonna try using a little bit of PV blaster it is a lubricant. It's more of a breakaway type of lubricant, but it is still a lubricant. Tighten that back down and see if we've ruined it or if it's gotten better. Like I said, you lubricate the wrong spot and they don't want to work anymore. Well, that's, that's working now. It's actually working perfectly. Must have just been stuff up inside there. Oh, you know what? There's a little bit of rust in there. I see the rust. A little bit of rust on that bolt. I need a little bit of different lubricant. Oh, well, again, that's working just fine. Let's go ahead and reassemble it. And we'll test it out, see if it works. this air driven choke back in place what it does is it chokes the engine until enough air comes off the cooling fins to cool the engine and it actually will push that fin or blade back and take the choke off old Briggs and Stratton's both horizontal and vertical engines I would say I don't, I don't think, well, maybe 60s. I know 70s, 80s Briggs and Stratton engines had the same setup, but they didn't use it for choke. They used it for throttle. They used it for throttle control, so. All right, that guy's back on. Let me check the oil while we're here. It's going to be a Honda style, so you don't screw it in when you check it. Let me go grab a rag. It looks like it's overfilled, honestly. Doesn't smell like gasoline, which is good. But this is a style that you don't screw in. You just put it in and pull it right back out again. And yeah, it's grossly overfilled. It's right there. It should be down here. It's like got twice as much oil as it should, which honestly could be the reason why somebody threw this to the curb because it was smoking. Oil. It was uh, smoking and burning oil because it's got way too much oil. All right, let's find these screws that I have so skillfully lost. There's one, there's two, and there's three. One, two, three. All right, cover's back on. Just looking at it here. Again, this is something that they've been doing that's real tricky. And they've been doing it on like all new engines, everything. It says 7.4. 7 this used to be a horsepower rating. And I think they've gotten everybody used to this being a horsepower rating, but it's actually foot pounds gross torque. It's only a 159cc engine. This is probably a three horse or four horse power engine. Um, it would be in the 200s, would be like the five to six horsepower, like two to 250 or whatever. Um, it's just interesting that they've done that on all these engines. They've downsized them and told no one. All right, there's no fuel in it. So yeah, there's no fuel at all. We're gonna spray a little bit of carb cleaner into the carburetor to see if it'll fire. And if it will, we're just going to put some fuel directly in there and see what happens. Oh, 
Alrighty, so we got a fire out of it. Very promising, smells real funny, because it's probably the car cleaner that it's burning. Let's throw a little bit of, of uh, fuel in it, just to see what happens. That's probably enough. About a quarter, half a tank. These really don't hold much fuel at all. I'm just gonna pull it over, see what happens. Let's try to not make a dust cloud. It's trying. So it won't start again. Let's give it a little extra something again. I'm gonna guess that carburetor's probably gummed up. We'll get onto that next. Third time's a charm. Nope. Another thing to look at that happens with these sometimes is the kill switch. This handle doesn't get pulled back far enough sometimes. Let's get onto that carburetor. I'm also gonna pull that spark plug out and check it. And I guess it's gonna be the larger 13 sixteenths socket driver, spark plug driver. This thing really needs to be washed. Yeah, it is the larger one. It's probably got an off-brand spark plug in it if I had to guess. Torch is a very common brand that these mowers come with. Any Chinese engine comes with for some reason. They have terrible spark plugs. No, it's not a torch. It's definitely, definitely gummed up. A lot of carbon. Let's see if we can show you. Yeah, lots of carbon. Yeah, as you can see, nice and clean now. Should be good to go. So we'll go stick it back in. Let's try kicking it over again here. I'm gonna put that fuel cap on so I don't get any garbage in the tank. Well, it was just a spark plug then. <laughs> because that thing runs perfect now. Just a dirty spark plug is all that, that that needed. Just a new spark plug. I'll put a new spark plug on this. I'm not gonna keep that old one. I'm either gonna put a E3 spark plug, which I can get nearby, or I might have one for it actually. Or I'm going to put uh, just an NGK, just a regular copper NGK. The champion plugs for these aren't too bad either. I am going to turn the throttle up though. It's awful low. I think it has to do with emissions or uh, I, over time these springs in here also get sprung. They just don't, you, they don't quite work like they should. They get sprung and the RPMs drop. On a nice splash lubrication system as this engine is you need your RPMs up high enough to splash that oil far enough to lubricate, which this low, it's not gonna hurt anything, but we're definitely gonna bring that up a little bit. Let's get to that. All right, here's your governor, and your governor goes inside, and there's actually a governor wheel that spins, and at certain RPMs that it opens and closes this, uh, these weights, and the weights make a uh, rod go up and down. That rod directly pushes on a lever that comes through the side of the engine 
and is connected to this and runs your governor. The more this spring pulls on this, the higher the RPMs will go. Um, it doesn't hurt that governor or anything inside really. But that governor also is an oil flinger in vertical shaft engines that also helps fling oil. There's a gear, it runs off of the crankshaft or the camshaft. I think it's a crankshaft. Crankshaft, definitely crankshaft. Um, but it also does pick up some of that oil and fling it. So, um, how to adjust it here. Here's your spring. At the end of that spring, there's a big long metal tab. I'm just gonna bend that guy up. So we're gonna go ahead and start it here. I would suggest not starting a lawnmower um, and putting your, your fingers anywhere near any blades. Don't hold on to the deck. Don't like put your hand up here away from spinning parts. Don't put your fingers down here. You will not have fingers anymore if you put them down here. If you don't know what you're doing, don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> um, I'm gonna set the, the blade height on this at maximum just to get it up off the dirt so we don't fling dirt everywhere. There we go. how much healthier that sounds just by turning that up a little bit it sounds a lot better it'll cut grass a lot better that way too so hearing how that was running there for a minute kind of sputtering and kicking and stuff I don't think there's any water in the fuel I don't think that's what's causing it but I'm gonna go ahead and pull that carburetor off anyways this is gonna be a mower that's gonna get put up for sale once I wash it up clean it up get all this grime and garbage off of it. This will be a mower for sale. So I wanna make sure it's done right. I don't wanna have, have somebody have an issue with it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that carburetor off and I'll go into depth on how to get the carburetor cleaned up. And yes, I do realize now that as I was talking to you guys, I turned the front wheels all the way down, not all the way up. So that's why it was still kicking dark. I've turned it the other way now. <laughs> I was looking at the mower going, something's not right still. Something, something's not right about, about that. Yeah, I figured it out. All right, so we're gonna change the oil on it now. Before you change oil, you want to start it. Mow your lawn, put it through a cycle. You do not wanna change your oil cold. You want everything stirred up fresh. You want everything um, out of your oil. I'm gonna tip it over here. Get all that dirt out of the way. We don't want to fill up our oil pan with dirt. On these and most other mowers, they're designed to drain the oil right out of the dipstick tube. So all you do, there's a drain hole right here too, but they're so easy to just tip over and drain the oil out of them. Nice and dark, a little bit of metallic in the oil it looks. Hopefully you guys can see that. Add just a little bit, bit of metallic. I bet you the oil on this has probably never been changed. It's pretty common. Probably just been added to, but never changed. With normal use, really you should be changing your oil every season. Uh, preference to before or after, that's up to you guys. I usually like to do it at the end of the season. Last mow, um, and you run your mower out of fuel at the end of the season, and it'll keep the carburetor clean. And then you drain all your oil out, put new oil in, 
it's ready for you for the next season. Tilt it up a little bit here. It'll kind of move the oil into the area that it needs to be. Then we tip it back over. More will come out. I think that's just about it though. You always want to tilt it with the carburetor facing upwards. If you actually have it the other way around, which I believe has happened here, that's why there's oil all inside this oil filter. Um, if you can see that, let me see what you can see. Yeah, but I think that's what's happened here. And that's actually fuel going into the intake now because it's stripping out of the carburetor into the intake. It shouldn't hurt anything. But tipping in the opposite direction, there's a breather tube right here. Oil from inside the crankcase will go right into here into the breather and fill your air filter, air filter box, everything up with oil. Um, and then you'll have issues and like this guy just pull the air filter off and went, ah, I'll just run it without, which is bad. Make sure you use oil that's specific to uh, small engines, to lawnmowers and stuff like that, whether it's full synthetic, part synthetic, or uh, just regular dyno oil, conventional oil. Really shouldn't use car oil in these. It's better than dirty oil, but car oil is designed for a specific temperature, a specific temperature range because they are in water-cooled engines. These are air-cooled engines. These normally just run hotter. They're going to, period. They just always will, unless it's a oil, or a air -cooled, water -cooled as as, if it's a water-cooled, water-cooled engine. If it's a water-cooled engine, you're probably okay, as long as you don't have any wet clutches like a motorcycle. But if you're air-cooled like everything else, make sure you get specific oils, whether it's made by Toro or Honda or by a different company for small engines. Uh, I've got some AMS oil stuff that I use. Uh, I try not to use the AMS oil stuff in the stuff that I sell, but occasionally I will, depending on the mower and depending on what I have on hand. So I'm going to go run to the store now. I'm going to go get a new spark plug for this guy, some new oil. I'll show you what is there at Home Depot. And then uh, we'll get it all put back together and eventually get this thing washed up and posted up for sale. All right, so here we've got John Deere oil, premium, power care, a lot of power care, which is Home Depot's brand. And a lot of these will work just fine. You can use a straight 30 weight, or you can use a 10W30 weight. It's gonna be, this would be really good for snow blowers. Uh, mowers would work just fine with this. Most newer mowers probably call for 1030 because they're a little, they're built a little different. Older style engines though, I would definitely say go with a straight 30, like a 90s, 90s and older engine or something that's maybe got a little more wear on it. But other than that, I would just go with a 10W30. Whether you like your turf guard made by John Deere, or you're just power care. Honestly, for the money, I think that's a better deal. That full quart, 32 ounces for $8. And that is 20 ounces for $6. Probably about the same price, actually. All said and done. So you've even got all synthetic 530. But I wouldn't use that unless it's all sorts. Actually, this stuff seems to be the best deal. It's a quart and a half for nine dollars. Kohler Honda for cycle air-cooled gasoline engines. Exactly what you're looking for. Not automotive. All right, let's go ahead and put some oil in it now. Now we've got it all drained out. Clean that dipstick off. It's fun doing stuff with a wrist brace. I'm using the Power Care from Home Depot. 10W30. Quart and a half for eight bucks. All right, so first dip, you always read your lowest side. It's right here. I 
I'm gonna go a little bit more. These engines do not hold a lot of oil. All right. Again, we'll go in and do just a dip. Pull it out. And we are halfway up the stick now. Read that. Try not to swish the stick around. Right up to the full mark. That oil has been changed and is good to go. Nice fresh oil. All right, we pulled the old spark plug out. Again, it was a, kind of an off-brand spark plug. E7RTC is what came off. It is a BPR7HS. That would be Boy Peter Romeo 7 High School Song. <laughs> Again, I'm not super good at the phonetics. but And it is exactly the right spark plug. It's got the same, same amount of threads. So this guy is exactly what we need. I'm gonna go ahead and get it put in here. I'll show you how to tighten this guy down. A lot of guys will under tighten a spark plug. So get the spark plug to where it stops like that. And you keep pushing it. See, that's still feeling tight. Almost feels like a stripped out screw, but it's not. And you get it to a point where it stops, like it doesn't want, I'm, I'm putting just one finger on the end here. And pulling lightly on it. Once it wants to kind of stop, you take it another like quarter turn and snug it up tight. That's exactly how you should put a spark plug in. And that guy's ready to go. All right, let's get onto this this uh, carburetor here. Going to be cleaning out the carburetor on this Toro recycler. They use these engines on a lot of different pieces of equipment. I don't believe they are Toro, Toro specific. <laughs> And yes, there are spider webs everywhere. Get rid of those guys. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this guy off. It's the thermal side of this auto choke. And then there's the fan driven side of the choking system. That guy will come off there. Hopefully you can see. I'll bring you around, actually. There you go. You should be able to see a little bit better there. That is the wind-driven side. With the auto choke. And you just pull up slightly, wiggling back and forth, and that will come out. Just had a mayfly land on my nose. This part goes in the carburetor. This part goes right here with a little flat screwdriver. We should be able to pry this away. Being careful not to bend the inner metal frame of this gasket. These gaskets are fully reusable. They are a rubber reusable gasket unless you bend them or something looks wrong with them, but this one looks perfectly fine. See, there's that metal inner structure. All right. This guy should start coming off here now. I've got it tilted upright to keep the fuel in the tank. It'll actually help keep it back inside so that there's no fuel to come out. 
it's a good idea to unplug your spark plug so nobody bumps your blade or you don't bump your blade or somebody comes up, little kid or whatever, plays with the blade. There's a chance that you could start it by moving or turning the blade. So it's always a good idea to unplug your spark plug. As you can see there, unplug it and pull the boot away to the side because there's still a chance of it starting if the boot is anywhere near the spark plug. So here's the fuel line. As you can see, no fuel coming out of it, which is good. Ah, so dirty. I'm gonna push that fuel line down and out of the way. Turning the throttle all the way one way. Pushing on the governor rod towards the block and pulling up. And then the spring that's connected to the same will come off like, come on, like so. And we've got a carburetor. Ta-da! All right, so got a carburetor here. I did clean it off camera. I didn't want to get the filth everywhere and inside the carburetor and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bottom off here using a 10 millimeter. I believe it's actually 3.8. That 10 mil is just a smidge large, which is really unusual. Oh yeah, there's a lot of dirt in the bottom of that carburetor. This is the reason why we're pulling it apart. Oh, you can't see it there. Let's see, let me bring it in and focus it. See all that dirt in the bottom? It's running just fine, but that's the reason why we're pulling it apart. Lots of dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and start by gently, oh, you know what, that's not gonna come off. Oh yeah, it is. This rubber gasket around the top is a little stuck. I didn't want to tear it, because I do not have a new one. It will, it will not be receiving a new one, but I'm slowly and carefully pulling it off. There we go. Let's get a can of carb cleaner here. I buy this stuff by the box. I clean carburetors all the time. Gonna go ahead and spray out the bottom of that. Wow, that's actually packed in there pretty good doesn't want to move. It's like dirt mixed with old fuel. It's like varnished in there. Grab a little bit of steel wool. This is four ot steel wool. Four ot meaning four zeros. It's the finest steel wool that I know of. And it works really good for cleaning carburetors. The carburetor's bad enough and really, really dirty on the inside. This stuff comes in handy. It's Berryman Chem Dip. Carburetor and parts cleaner. Stuff works awesome. Cleaning this seal up here. Spray it out again. Still a little bit down there in the bottom. It's probably the most amount of dirt I've seen in a carburetor in quite some time. I usually, I deal with more varnish than anything. All right, that is sufficiently clean. That bolt's pretty clean as well. It's the bolt that holds the bottom of the carburetor on, but it does, the face of it is in relations with the jet itself. The jet will come out with a flathead screwdriver. Carefully. I, I'm going to need a different screwdriver. You want a flathead screwdriver that reaches all the way both sides of the jet. If you try to take a jet off with too small of a carburetor, or if you try to take a jet off with too small of a screwdriver, you can actually ruin the jet. Because you can actually snap the ears off it. They're soft brass and it's really easy to break them. Let's see if we've got one here. That was too big. The shoulders on these are just too big. I've got this guy. Let me see if I can get it off. That is not gonna move. Not without putting up a fight. So I'm just gonna spray this out without taking it out. It was running. 
If there's any varnish, this will take it out. I would much rather take that jet out and make sure it's clean up, make sure it's clean up b behind it, but I am not gonna break that jet just to get that out. So for right now, this is what we're gonna do. Making sure you have your safety glasses on for that very reason. You want to make sure you don't put any carb cleaner on any rubber components. It will destroy the rubber. It'll make it swell up and it will never fit again. This needle has a little rubber nip on it. We're going to push it, take that to the side. I'm going to spray in and through. This is where the fuel comes in and past the needle. We're going to spray backwards because there's usually a lot of dirt up inside there. Which will cause a lot of issues. I was just spraying in circles. Again, that's got a rubber nip on it. I'm gonna spray it off, but making sure to keep the rubber away from the carb cleaner completely. Now, in a carburetor that has a lot of varnish, that will have a lot of varnish on the needle. You can try cleaning it, but at that point, if it's that dirty, try cleaning it. And if it <laughs> ruins itself, you're gonna replace it anyways. If you don't have an air compressor, get a can of air like you use for dusting, or use a can of whatever upside down or keep your empty cans around because they've got a little bit of compressed air in them still. And it works quite nicely to blow out any carb cleaner that's still in the system. Because when you spray this out, you want to blow air through most of these orifices so there's not carb cleaner just sitting. Sorry about that, my camera died. It's the first time I've really actually fully killed that battery. But like I was saying, you just don't want orifices and passages and different areas to be full of carb cleaner because if any of those again come in contact with any rubber it will destroy the rubber i have very good luck with not needing actual rebuild kits for carbs i can usually just pull them apart clean them up and put them back together cleaning this rubber gasket up a little bit of steel wool just trying to get some of the garbage that's on it off of it to make it seal again no cracks in it. It's in pretty good shape still, just dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it now. That gasket's pretty well clean. We're gonna put a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil. Two-stroke oil works good too. Marvel's my favorite to put on gaskets. I always put something on the rubber gaskets though because it just kind of rejuvenates to some extent. Obviously a dried up, worn out gasket's not gonna just come back to life. Um, it's done and will need to be thrown away, but this is still Soft enough to reuse it just putting a little bit of help on it Put that guy in there like that I'm gonna put a little bit of Marvel On the needle to help it to not get stuck. Because sometimes when you clean a carb out, for some reason that needle gets stuck the first time you try it. Just tap it, tap the bowl of the carburetor with a screwdriver. Just smack it, just whack. Usually it'll stop leaking everywhere. And we've got a pretty well cleaned out carburetor. Like I said, I would have rather been able to pull that jet off, but it just wasn't going to happen with this one. I'm going to rotate that forwards like a Honda. That's your fuel drain, so you can drain the fuel out. And it's ready to go back on. 
I'm going to go clean that filter box up. Because that inside of that box was disgusting. So let's go ahead and reinstall here after we hook up the other stuff. <laughs> Need to hook up these guys. I've got this one to hook up, which goes like that. And then over to here. Right, and then this guy goes like so. Function it, make sure it's not locking up or being weird. Like I said, we'll have to find a new filter lid for this. It's almost Honda style. I'll have to look online and find something that'll work or find the exact one for this. There's a couple places that I look for parts. <laughs> There's a couple places that I look for parts only and then use their part numbers and go elsewhere. Here we go. You know, it would help if I hooked up the fuel line. Like, so. Spark plug boot back on the spark plug. We're good to go. All right, so the oil's been changed, carburetor's been cleaned out, it's got a new spark plug. Let's go ahead and start it up and see how she sounds now. Honestly, sounds really really good starts easy love the auto choke system on this I'm turning it because I'm gonna flip the deck up you always want to flip the deck with the carburetor facing upward always that thing runs awesome though bottom of the decks in pretty good shape blades in okay shape honestly honestly with how much wear is on this blade it probably should be changed, and I probably will change it, put a new blade on this. It's had some good use put on this uh, this mower, but she's ready to go. She is ready to be put back in service. Again, I will be washing this down, making it look new. I'll be putting a new air filter and cover on that. I do need to make some adjustments to the self pace system. That's really, really simple, really, really easy to do. I'll link that video up there in the top as a card. And I hope you guys enjoyed. That will be it for this, this lawnmower. Um, now the other lawnmower I found in that set, the all-wheel drive. If that video is up, I will have it come up at the end as you know a little video here or here. Um, consider subscribing <laughs> but if a video doesn't pop up here with that other all-wheel drive Toro then that is because that video is not out yet so as soon as that video is out I'll put a link to it right here but I hope you guys have a good one and hope you guys enjoyed really do see you later tubers bye